You're watching The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler at your mom's house. Welcome back to The Honeydew, y'all. We're over here at Studio Jeans doing it at your mom's house. I'm Ryan Sickler. Ryan Sickler on all social media, ryansickler.com. Go sign up for my newsletter on the website. Um, got dates coming at you. I will be in Phoenix. When am I going to be in Phoenix? March 19th through the 21st in Phoenix. And uh, you can catch me in Vancouver, April 23rd through the 25th. I will be in Minneapolis this year. I will be coming to New York this year. Go to ryansickler.com. You'll see all the dates. Um, pod, uh, website for the podcast, the honeydewpodcast.com. It's where you get all the social media links, merch, all that stuff there. And, uh, I can't again, say thank you enough to everybody that's reached out. I'm overwhelmed by it. I love it in a great way. Um, so many of you too have even said you've started therapy because of this show, the EMDR therapy specifically. A lot of you said you're going to look into it. I'm glad you're you know, taking care of yourselves and laughing through all the bullshit. If you don't know what we do here, I call it highlighting the lowlights. And these are the stories behind the storytellers. And today's storyteller, first time here on the Honeydew. Very excited, ladies and gentlemen. Mark Norman is here, everybody. Mark Norman. Hey, hey, good to be here. Thank you for being here. Appreciate you having I'm, I'm hurting there, uh, right? <laughs> <clears throat> long night. Yeah, long one. Oh, boy. I am. My asshole's bleeding. <laughs> I'm hungover, I'm gay, really did it up, but I appreciate you having me. Well, I appreciate you being here. Uh, before we get into all of your stories, and you've got quite a bit here on the list, will you please plug, promote, everything oh, you want? Sure, sure. I'm all over the road this year. Uh, hit me on marknormancomedy.com, Instagram, Twitter, a podcast. is called Tuesdays with Stories with Joe List. He's a cute kid. and We've uh, had him here on The Honeydew. Him. Great you know episode. Him. And uh, yeah, yeah, check me out. Come see me live uh, before I kill myself. <laughs> so uh, please, say you can say you saw me when. <laughs> see me before I go full gay. Come on in, people. Sorry about the sunglasses. I'm I'm culturally appropriating a a jazz musician. There we go. There you go. Ah, the lights. You all right? Can you do it? You can keep them on if you want. Maybe I'll keep them on. Yeah, be comfortable. Let me tell you how much of a fuck up. The whole thing yeah. about being a fuck up. But this is today. Woke up. My alarm never went off. And I checked. I was like, what the fuck? I happened to wake up. I set it for Friday. Who does? How do I, How do you set the day? I, should, I just put 9 o'clock when it was on Friday. Today's Thursday. So then I get out and I go, okay, I got to return the rental car and I got to fill it up with gas. And then I got to go to the pod. I'm taking an Amtrak. The rental car drop-off is at Amtrak. So I fill the car up. I drive the car to Amtrak. I drop it off. And then I go, wait a minute. I got to go do the pod and then come back here to get the train. <laughs> so I, I spent 35 bucks coming here. I'll spend 35 going back. I could just use the rental car I had. I wasted 70 clams. <laughs> God, I almost hit a kid on a Razor scooter or whatever that thing, the bird thing. Yeah, those fucking uh, things, man. Probably for the best. I'm too, too hungover <laughs> to drive anyway, but yeah. Sorry. No, please. Had to get that out. It's a, it's a $70 fuck up, and I was late, and I hate myself, and my dad fucked me. I, um, I'm sorry to hear about your dad. Yeah. I, had, I had a $70 That's fuck good. up. I don't care how much money you have. $70 yes. is 70 fucking dollars. When you didn't need to fuck yep. up. Yeah. And I, I must have... I don't know what I did. I've never done this before, but I either set my wallet down on the table at dinner uh -oh. or when I stepped outside, I was FaceTiming with my daughter. Uh -huh. It might have flopped, but I feel like I would have felt it hit the ground. Yeah. I walked around, but either way, none of the credit cards were used, license gone, everything, and I r rarely, if ever, carry cash. Wait, wait, wait. 70 bucks, bro. They, they got everything. Got all of it. Uh, got dude. all of it. Brutal. Nice coach wallet. Got all uh, of them. all just, set. All because of one snafu. You know, you could have stupid if, if stupidity. We, if we were a little more uh, what's uh, conscious, we would be all right. But we're in our phones. We're fingering each other. It's all over <laughs> the place. You know. So we got. I, I got to focus. Uh, well, That's let's focus here. on this because you have quite a few stories. I want to. You're originally from New Orleans. Born and raised, baby. And uh, there you go. And um, yeah, crazy. you said you've got. You had some childhood issues. Oh, yeah. Well, externally and internally. You know, right. bedwetter, braces, dandruff, uh, 
just the whole thing. We grew up in a in a dilapidated mansion on Esplanade Avenue, and uh, we had a train. Now, when you say dilapidated, oh yeah, say it, it again. Money pit, dilapidated. Dilapidated. Is that the word? I don't know. It sounds like an old dinosaur. I get it though. Yeah. But how? Like, give us a uh, describe how like fucked up yeah how run down like were some rooms not you couldn't even go in like what are oh, we talking yeah. about i'm talking it was huge it was a mansion we had like a west wing <laughs> and we had to make the back of it a bed and breakfast because we had we needed more income because mm -hmm. i'm talking sheetrock hanging off the walls broken windows termites there was a pigeon would fly around in there every now and then cockroaches uh, we had those mechanic creeper lights, you know, those the hang. Mm -hmm. Just because, yeah, like, the yellow with the yellow cage around yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because like a lot of the rooms, the outlets didn't work, so we had to run an extension into a, like my bedroom. So you say we? You got mom, dad, how many siblings? Older brother. Just so four of you in there. Uh. Yeah, four of us, <laughs> and uh, we had a transgen transvestite nanny named Enos, big black dude with a wig and high heels. For and, real? Yeah. And this is back, this is in the 90s when that was fucking nuts. Like, no one got it. I, my friends would come over and be like, what the fuck is that? Like, this guy looked like uh, Terry Crews <laughs> in, a, in a wig. That was your nanny? Yeah. <laughs> For I, how long? I don't know, like six years, five wow. years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this guy, my parents were workaholics because they had to afford this shit box. So uh, he so taught me how to so drive, fight, uh, put the seat up, date, take a girl out, all this shit. So I'm wow. being taught how to be a man by a dude in heels. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. And yes, I've tried to pitch this show. And yes, every queef <laughs> in Hollywood, in Burbank, is too much of a pussy to pick up the show. Yeah, they are. Fuck you, you spy. Your life is too clutch. fucking out there yeah, to be like, a television It's show. a little dark. I'm like, yeah, yeah the dark is good, you yeah. fucking idiot. Ah, kill yourself. But um, yeah. if I had some more juice, so, I could sell it. All right, let's talk about that because that is okay. First of all, you don't have your parents don't have the money to update the home. Yeah, but they have money for a nanny. Yeah, well, he was cheap. <laughs> we'll say that. I think he was working for beef jerky and then beef shampoo. Beef jerky. Yeah, because this guy <laughs> he had he, a we, slim Jim gig yeah. on the side. <laughs> we gave him our van too. We, we had this old van. And we're like, you take the van. He's like, thank you, thank you. Oh, oh my god. How did they meet him? I don't know. That's a, I think it was a referral. He was a burlesque dancer at night, so he would go to these gay bars and, and shake his, his you know, moneymaker. But uh, I guess somebody told my dad about this guy, and he was like, yeah, whatever, we'll take anything. My, you know, they, my parents are the most liberal, open-minded, like nonchalant, who gives a fuck, people on the planet. So they're like, yeah, it's a nanny, bring him in. And he would clean and... You know, sweet dude. Like I was gonna say, he obviously six years. He must have been a good person. Great. Treat you guys well. I mean, I told a story on a other pause, but uh, my bike got stolen one day, and he got it back for me, in a in a wig. <laughs> like, you know, it was the mean streets in New Orleans. This is pre camera phone, pre Wi Fi, when it was like racial tension, tough. We were the white family, and these kids, you know, street urban youths, uh, also known as black. They uh they were taking my bike apart on the on the stoop and I said that's my bike you know I was in the car hiding and he goes all right hang here and he just yanked it out of their hand and they're like going nuts like look at this faggot ah you know because it was the nineties and they're holding tools and shit and he still just was fearless enough to just take the bike back and like look him in the eye and walk to the van and put the bike in and we drove home fuck yeah this is my male role model yeah in a in a wig I love and heels and heels. That's and, fucking and great. He could move in those heels. I mean, he was like. He really swiffering. taught you how to fight? Oh, yeah. Swiffering. <laughs> I mean, he was cleaning and shit. We had like music swiffering. playing and he was dusting and spinning, you know, and he could moonwalk and everything. I mean, he was a, he was a talent. <laughs> he was a talent? And yeah, this guy was. I mean, he was gifted. a burlesque dancer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this guy was in the arts. And, uh, I mean, he taught me everything. I got, you know, fist fight at school one day. He's like, let me show you some moves. Because, I mean, this. Talk about tough. You got to be tough as a Fuck black guy yeah. in the 90s who wants to be a, a lady. Who dresses like a woman. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you better be tough. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, he was uh, he was like my, you know, he taught me how to drive a stick. Everything. He was my male role model. That is fantastic. That, why? Crazy, huh? I'm sorry that everyone is too much of a fucking pussy in this industry to make that into a series. It's your loss, you it, fucking skanks. It really skanks. is. It really is. Yeah. But. Um, 
Okay, so you talk, you, you mentioned bedwetting. Yeah, oh, like, yeah. At what age are you? Does that begin? At I least mean, do you remember? I mean, I've ever since or it just never stopped. Never stop. I don't remember where it started, when it stopped, but I remember probably stopping around 13, 14. Finally, I mean, I ruined sleepovers. I peed on girls. <laughs> <laughs> you would when you drank, it would come back, you know, like you would be so blacked out. And I peed on so a lot what? Of what? What do you remember about? So my brothers also, I know that I've I've mentioned it before, so they're gonna have to live with it. But they both wet the bed, and they wet the bed. I mean, I want to say my one brother till seventh grade, and then my younger brother, whatever the difference, probably about third grade, fourth grade. Mm-hmm. But my parents got this, you know, and I say now as a parent, you look back on it and you're like, oh my God, we were, you know, my parents were divorced and then got back together. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden, all this stuff starts happening, ah. you know, and it's like, oh, of course, they're fucking, their bodies are reacting a certain way. But both of them, it was happening to. Right. And um, like they were weird? cycling, you know what I mean? Yeah, like they were yeah. cycling. They were synced up. Yeah. And my parents got this thing back in the time, it was a little bit primitive. I don't know what they use now, but it was a buzzer. It was a T-shirt and a, and a pair of tidy whites. I had the buzzer. You did? Yes. That's and what I, worked. I, I, cir- I short-circuited it. I pissed yeah. on it. <laughs> yeah, they did that. I yeah. broke it yeah. with all my urine. It, <laughs> you'd think they'd make these things waterproof, you idiots. Yeah. But I, I it was pissed like a all over. buzzer you sewed on the shoulder, and, and then it, a cord ran down to a little thing in the crotch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was supposed to train you that, you know, as soon as that hits, buzzes, you get up, you go to the bathroom. Yeah. And I mean... Between my fucking brother, because I have a twin brother and we had to share a bedroom. Between his fucking retainer and the <laughs> all night long and then finally uh, getting the fucking sleep. The uh, I'm like, come the fuck on. Like, I never got a good night's sleep. Sure. For, forever, I didn't get a good night's sleep. But that shit did end up working. Oh, really? It worked for both of them. Yeah. It didn't work for me. I tried these dehydration pills like to dry you out. That didn't work. And then my dad eventually got so fed up because... He was annoyed with the bedwetting. He's like, you got to grow up, you fucking loser. So he said, no more liquids after six. So I'm sitting there eating Doritos at, <laughs> at 608 going yeah. like, <sighs> yeah. you know, I look like a, like a Somali pirate. I'm so thirsty. I'm like, it's like water world. I got to pee in a jar and filter it. You know, I'm so thirsty. And I'm, you know, my brother's gug, uh, guzzling uh, Kool-Aid and shit and Pepsi. And I'm like, ah, was, he's not having that out. problem at all. No, no. Uh, it was brutal, man. It was a dry county. And so you would would you not go to sleepovers because of it? I would go because I wanted to hang and I wanted to you know be a part of society. I didn't want to be like a, a weirdo, like a disabled guy. Like I can't go. I have a problem. So I would just stay up all night. Uh, and it was like I was like in a Holocaust death camp. I was like, all right, I'll, I'll sleep in shifts. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll sleep, sleep for like shit. ten minutes here and then I'll wake up. And I saw everything. I would just walk around my friends' houses at like two in the morning. They're they're snoozing. And I'd go into the mom's panties and, you know, <laughs> watch some TV and check the fridge. I was like a weird night owl, night crawler guy at like nine, you know. I'm <coughs> checking out porn, you know. I'm going in and out of the house, playing with a cat, whatever I had to do. Jerk off on a friend's face. Anything. Just to Anything. kill the time. Did you guys jerk off together, you and your buds? No. What? Never. Oh, that was a big one in, I was, in, in yeah, my that, childhood. Yeah, none of the... What, okay, so let's talk about that, too, because was it a circle jerk thing? No. Or what was it? What, it was what, you. You're like, no. Nah, come nah, on. Nah, nah. I mean, come on. Let's stop. <laughs> you take a corner. I'll take a corner. We got the porn in the middle, and uh, yeah, it was like a bonding experience. I did make my friend taste it once, and he never talked to me again. <laughs> Is that real? Oh, yeah. Oh, I wait, mean, his or yours? His, his. I was like, I dare you to taste it. He's like, I'm not tasting it. I was like, a double dog. And he was like, ah, I hate you. You know, it was a great moment. <laughs> he's never talked to you again. I mean, we're still cool. He's uh, <laughs> he's dead now. He was a gay porn star. But, oh, this is a story. This I've told before. Uh, but this is a peach. Uh, one time, my friend had this older sister who was, you know, something, or, you know, as a kid, you're like, oh, a woman, you know, and uh, we were probably like 13, and she was 17 or something, so it was like a lady with pubes, it was a big deal, and we go home after skateboarding all day, we go back to his room, and there's a stack of VCR tape, VHS tapes, and I see one that says skate, I'm like, oh, let's watch a skate video, he's like, I'm jumping in the shower, I put the video in, a little fuzzy for a second, then boom, it cuts to his sister naked. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? And all my friends are like, what the fuck? He's in the shower. I'm like, it's a video 
shooting through a closet in the bathroom and her in the mirror, like looking at herself naked. And and like, how old like, would you say? Seventeen. She yeah, is? seventeen, yeah. and I was probably thirteen or fourteen. And how many friends are watching this? It's with probably you? like three of us, four of us. And he went. The the guy who he's in the shower. TV was is in the shower. I'm not gonna say his name. And uh, yeah, so we were like, "What the fuck?" And she's like, you know, trying to be sexy and whatever, and like making poses. And it was super hot and everything. But he got out of the shower and he's you know drying his hair. He got a, he's got the towel in his ear and he just goes. What the fuck are you doing? I'm not, I'm not. He's just like, and we're like, what are you crazy? Why do you have this? And he made up this whole lie about how he blackmailed her because she owed him money. But I think he was just curious about the female body. And his sisters in particular. Yeah, yeah. and I don't, I'm not saying he's incestual or a weirdo or inbred, but I think he was like, we, we don't have internet porn. We don't have any playboys. There's a lady here. I'm going to film her and, and learn about the lady body. Man, skate, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That was a great video. Big Bush. <laughs> yeah, remember Big Bush? Big old mm. 90s Bush on that 17-year-old. I um I still have the tape if you guys want to watch it. Yeah, we can we can insert edit that for sure. <laughs> um you also we were talking before we recorded, you talked about uh an embarrassing moment, a couple of them, but one on, I want to hear about this one on a field trip. You went on a field trip. Uh. So what grade is this? This is probably uh, third grade. I was in public school. You know, it was pretty mixed, diverse. And we went on the field trip to some park, like a national park. And I don't know what happened, but I shit myself. <laughs> like hardcore, like diarrhea. Where? On the bus or like no, walking we, around? We were walking around. It was grassy. And I remember just being, you know when you got a turtle head or yeah. something? And you're like, I got it. I, and I farted and it just pollocked, Jackson pollocked, you know, all <laughs> over the panties. And it was running down my leg. I had those short shorts on. And uh, oh. you couldn't hide it. I mean, yeah. it was, the back of my pants looked like a like a bomb went off. It was brutal. Oh, and uh, so I had to tell the teacher, and she was like, all right. And I don't know. Things felt different back then. She was like, all right, everybody back on the bus. Mark, hold on. And the bus driver got up, and he goes, don't sit on my seats with that. And I was like, okay. And he put down newspaper on the oh, seat. Oh, God, in front of all these kids. Well, all the kids. I just got to <laughs> wait there. They're all sitting. I was like Rosa Parks Terrible. with shit on me. I'm in the front. Everybody's like four seats. They, they left four empty seats, oh, and they're all kind of huddled in the back. Like, we don't want to get near the, the shit stain douche. And uh, you had to ride for like an hour. Just, you know, when you, you know, the shit starts hardening, and you're kind of, it's kind of like, a, it feels like bark in your asshole. And uh, yeah, I ruined the uh, the one ads. That Did day. you become the the kid that shit himself all through school? A little bit, but I was already bedwetter. So at that point, I was You're just like, mm, yeah, I was in too deep. Finish it all off. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. I um I remember my father coming home, uh, telling me he he was a chaperone on my younger brother's field trip, and mm -hmm. we grew up in Maryland, so D.C. was a common field trip. They would take you to go to the Smithsonian sure. or the mall or whatever. And they went on this one trip, and it was, I think it was like three school buses that took whatever, I don't know, the sixth grade or something. Yeah. And um, he came home, and he, I said, how was it? And he's like, oh, man, I feel so bad for this one kid in my group today. I go, what happened? He's like, he shit himself. Well, he didn't shit himself. He almost shit himself. But what happened was he had to shit so bad, the bus driver was like, you're not shitting on my bus, mm. and pulled over on the Capitol Beltway, mm. put the hazards on, the other two buses behind them don't know what's going on, so they also pull over. What? And this kid gets out on the side of the highway, and there's trees. He goes behind a tree, but everyone, the whole grade can see him. Uh. And he shits out there on the hill in front of the whole grade and the car's pants. Oh. And then had to get back on the bus and finish the ride all the way back. And ah. he, he became that kid. I mean, I, I got a hand. That's a, that kid deserves a purple heart. I mean, that's impressive. He, he had to. He couldn't do anything about it. Wow. Because oh, you ever man. shit in the woods? It ain't easy. You think like, oh, I'll just pop a squat. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta hold yourself. It feels wrong because you're so used to a toilet. I had to shit in in Africa outside. <laughs> what? My, it's a hold. My brother was in the Peace Corps in Africa. We went to visit him. Brutal trip. We stayed in a hut. We cut my clit off. It was a whole thing. <laughs> um, I got AIDS. But uh, so we're out in Africa and we're just driving from place to place because there's not really a lot of public transport. This is like, you know, primitive. And uh, I just had to shit so bad. And the guy's like, all right, I will pull over, you know, and I'm shitting. 
And it, it's hard. You're on the side of the road. It's tall grass. There's a monkey laughing at you. You know, I had a kid with a, a jug on his head looking at me. <laughs> it's brutal. It's a different world it out is, there. It's funny you ask that because not only are you 100% correct, I remember the first time I had to shit outside. And it, you're right. I, it's and jarring. It, it wasn't until high school. I was 16 or 17. It's pouring down rain oh, God. and I'm driving and I'm, I know I'm not making it home and I'm, you know, when you're standing in the yeah, car, yes, the yes, like, oh. yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, I pull into this little like gravel. It's where we, uh, there was a soccer field where we practice soccer and I just whip in. There's a bunch of trees right here and I have three friends in the car wow. and it's pouring down rain. Yeah. And I run into the woods. I pull my pants down and I'm just, concerned about taking the shit so yeah. concerned and i've never done this before that i don't bother to tuck my dick oh i just start pissing and i just i mean piss all in my pants yep, i'm like yep. fuck and it's pouring down on me oh. anyway and i was like i didn't even think that because of the angle i'm not on a toilet where it can just shoot out here it's going right i was like god fucking damn it wow and okay. then i went home and i was like this is this is fucking terrible it's terrible and it's the terrible. rain too and I the mean, rain i'm that's soaked like a, but like the at least notebook. that covered it up yeah <laughs> notebook <laughs> it's like it's kind of <laughs> dramatic you know it's romantic you're just shitting in the woods with rain and i hope you don't shit in your pants yeah that, that was that happen. was the main goal right i could take the piss yeah especially yeah. with the rain you're already yeah. wet anyway so fuck it it is kind of nice though when you piss yourself and it's so warm it you know and you're kind of like ooh, this is uh this is soothing a little bit can i tell you one of the best places and uh shits i've ever had please i'm gonna tell you so years ago a bunch of friends and i we went um i think it was i don't think it was havasu lake mead one of these lakes out here i don't mm. know and we houseboated yeah but we waited till the last minute unlike everybody else who got their shit a year ahead and these houseboats had you know slides off the back oh, yeah. and we are on we are the trailer on the water i got gotcha. you and um the toilet was just we all it was like eight of us and we're like no one is allowed to shit on that toilet if you shit you line it with a, a plastic bag mm -hmm. take the bag you throw it out no yeah. one shits on the fucking boat sure so we all start diving and swimming i was like i'm just gonna shit in the water yeah i've never shat underwater before it feels good and giving birth underwater is the most natural way to have a baby come here, out here. and i figure you know let me just you know, I'll just we'll make this shit cove over here. Yeah. We shit over here. We don't do anything but shit there. We don't swim party there. Uh oh, I'm and nervous. And man, did it pop up and like bob? A few people's did. It popped oh, up and bob. Oh, there's yeah. a multiple shit. Yeah, that was that was everybody. That's where everybody would go that area, you what? know. And that was our toilet, you know. Oh, we shit over there. God. But I'll tell you, it came right out. It was clean. Yeah. It felt good. It's like an enema. I was like, you should. We should all shit under. When we have to shit, we should just shit underwater. Yeah, that's it was not the bad. best shit I took. It could be the future. Like, you know, these toilets are yeah, so complex Yeah, they're spraying you now. to clean. You might as well just soak your ass in it and then just bang it out in yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. We got a fish tank. Get a <laughs> shit tank, you know? Yeah. That, that'd be yeah. great. Just bring the water up yes. higher. You're on a fucking bowl. Exactly. Just bring the water bring up Bring it right higher. up to my ass cheeks, and I'll just shit right. That's, That's a great idea. That's the best shit you'll ever take. I'm talking. And hell, put a, a couple of guppies in there. They can eat it. <laughs> <laughs> Too pretty. You got a fish tank and make it clear. Make the toilet bowl clear. Because you want to see the shit. You want to see that. You want to yeah. see it power into the water. Right. Yeah, right. yeah of course. Oh, of course. Man. That would go viral. I, I you bet put if you had a camera shit tank. right next yeah. to it. Yeah. Listen, this is our invention right now. I love it. I We're love about it. about to retire. The shit tank. Get on it, Elon. Get on it, Elon Musk. Come yeah. on, goddammit. <laughs> um, that shit right. tank will look better than the super truck. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I asked you about. Um, any embarrassing moments and you said that um you did have one you wanted to share i got many well wh where do you want to start the highlighted one up oh there on the board. yeah this is bad <laughs> so you know 90s white kid urban neighborhood i went to public school so all the black kids were the cool kids as you you do and uh my dad this is how trashy we were my dad would cut my hair you know when you're eight or nine or whatever you know, you, you, you keep your hair short. That's yeah. it, you know? So it wasn't a big deal. And why spend $18 at Supercuts to get snipped by some Down Syndrome guy? So my dad was cutting my hair as, as you know, we do in the kitchen. And he had to get a phone call. And I was like, man, I want to fit in with these kids, you know? Like, these are cool kids. I want to be cool. I was probably like 11. And I he went to leave, and I took the buzzer. 
and I shaved three lines <laughs> on each side of my head, like a vanilla icy yeah, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And uh, immediately when I was done, because I, I, there was no mirror. I just went, ring, 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 I went, I just did it by ear, you know? And uh, my dad came in. He's like, what the fuck happened? Oh, my God. And I had to go to school, and everywhere he went, like we'd go to the superstore, and he was like, how about this kid's hair, huh? And I'm like, shut up. He's like, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. <laughs> That's not my cut. Yeah. That's not my cut. <laughs> so embarrassing. So embarrassing. And then I showed up to school, and, and everybody, all the black kids were like, ah! He's trying to act black, huh? You know, and I, was, uh, I had like a, you know, little pony lunchbox and everything. Brutal. Hello Kitty shirt on uh, with that haircut. It was it was so apparent what I was trying to do, and it, they all called me on it, and it was way worse. Oh, God. Don't try to act black, folks. Yeah. Leave it to the pros. The pros. <laughs> um, brutal, brutal. Sp- speaking of your parents, and, and this is, it sounds horrifying, but you said there was an incident when you were in high school that happened with your parents. Yeah, yeah, we got robbed so much. It was. I, I wanted to ask. I mean, did you? If you're in New Orleans, I, you know, I'm originally from Baltimore, and I would imagine that house would be robbed left and right in Baltimore. Left and right. Well, yeah. what, what city? Baltimore. Yeah. Really? That's a rough town. Yeah. Man. I mean, we didn't live in that neighborhood, but yeah. I'm saying if we had that kind of house in that city, that would be checked in on quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It would be frequented, I exactly. believe. Exactly. Were you Timonium? No. we oh. mo- No. Baltimore, West Baltimore, and then out to Carroll County, yeah. Oh, okay, You're thinking okay. Magoobies. Yes, yes, that's all I know. Yeah, that's, I went to college in that area, Towson. Ah, yeah. That's a great diner over there. Yeah. All right. But, uh, yeah, so we got robbed so much. I walked in on a few robberies. So what are they coming in to take? Anything. I mean, they just uh, they got nothing or it's a crackhead or something. So they're just like, I can get a quick TV. I can get a quick uh, VCR. I'm in and out, you know. And the house is so big that, I mean, would you do you imagine that you've been robbed and not even know you were that what they took they all get the in time and out. Really? all the time yeah and my mom was in kind of denial about it like the tv would be gone she's like oh the neighbors probably use it and you know even as an eight-year-old you're like come on mom yeah you grow up what are you doing but i walked one time i saw i walked in on a guy just like a big dude in my living room and he was just kind of like doing this shit and I go, oh, hey, you know, you're so naive. I go, hey, what are you, what are you doing? How, can I help you? And he goes, oh, uh, I'm looking for your dad. And I go, oh, let me go get him. So I go to the other side of the house, and I was going upstairs looking for my dad. Dad, dad. I look out the back window down at the backyard, and I see him running through the backyard with a computer monitor under oh, his arm. Shit. And I was like, whoa, what was that about? <laughs> oh, I didn't even get it. And then later, I told my mom. She was like, oh, my God, you're face-to-face. She, she, we called the cops, and I described the guy. It was brutal. But, uh... Yeah, we'd come home. And a you lot. never moved out of this place. No, no. So this is your birth home. No, I no. grew up on in the Marigny, right outside the French Quarter. But uh, my dad got this deal on the house, so he just jumped on it, even though it was a horrible deal, I'm sure. And he probably paid next to nothing for this this shithole. But I think he just wanted to look like I'm gonna mix up myself. I'm gonna have a mansion in New Orleans. I don't know. And uh, it, it sucked. I mean, not not to mention the running water was bad and the lights, you know, the light situation, no, no energy. Really? Yeah. And the first thing we did was install a big alarm system, like big, high-tech, 90s alarm system. And I remember the code was Batman. So, like, the alarm would go off, and they would call you to see, like, hey, are you dead? And you'd go, Batman, and that meant you're good. Because we were kids, so they were like, the kids can even remember this. Mm-hmm. They're idiots. So, uh but it was so weird being a kid at like one in the morning and you just hear woo, 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 woo. And you're like, man, there's somebody in the house. Like I'm, I'm upstairs in bed. Yeah, and, and where are they? Because it's a monster house. Are they going to come in and butt fuck me? Are they going to steal my <laughs> toys? Are they going to rape my dad? Or, well, what's going to happen? And you just got to like deal with it. And you're just laying in bed like, right. And then the police show up. Yeah, police show up, then you hear the ding dong, and then my dad's in his, you know, nighty, and he's like, oh, he's got a candle and a floppy hat. You know? <laughs> like, it's okay, it was a false alarm or whatever. That happened all the time, all the time. So, How many rooms would you say? Oh, man. Well, the first, the the front of the house is this giant parlor. Yeah, giant. walk us through. I You enter the front door. Yeah, yeah, front door, giant parlor, and just exposed brick with, like, shitty, you know, walls that you, have come down, you know? And, uh, like, beams and, light, like, weird, uh, kind of like this. Like, just cords everywhere, hanging, like, loose wires. And I would skateboard in the parlor. That's how big it was. Like, I, I could, oh. It was like a skate park. I, could, I, had, I had ramps in there and shit. And then we had this giant winding staircase going up to the second floor. And it had no banister, which was insane for, like, just five, six-year-olds, seven-year-olds running around. 
And a uh, big bay window. It was a beautiful home, but these two gay guys bought it and just totally cleaned it up. But uh, when I was a kid, it was so damn nails out coming out everywhere. And then you go to the back, and that's the kitchen and the TV room. And then you Kitchen's go to the... up on the second floor. No, 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 oh, okay. first floor. But gotcha. the second floor was just bedrooms. And uh, then you go back, back, and there's a big balcony, and the, the house kind of curves around, and that's where the bed and breakfast was. So we had to go in there and change sheets and, you know, restock the cooler and, you know, fix the, the put new towels in and stuff. Is there an attic? No attic. No, no attic. attic. Basement? No, no, okay. no, not a lot of basements in New Orleans with the. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, flooding. imagine you're, of course, you're yeah. below sea level. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, uh, yeah, it was a crazy huge house. And eventually my dad built his office in one of the rooms because it was too dicey. Like, he's like, I don't want to not be here. So he had to work out of the house because it was too, too much. And the bed and breakfast did well, well enough. That well enough. Helped with the bills. Yeah, we had, you know, Chinese businessmen and traveling musicians and all these weirdos because they had to go to the French Quarter and do stuff. And this is pre-internet, so it was, a, it was like, we call it the Dufour Baldwin house because it was this guy built it, Dufour, and some other guy, Baldwin, he, he dated. And I was like, hey, Dufour Baldwin house. Yeah, I'd like to rent a room. And I had to go, bah, bah, you know, and she'd be writing shit down. Okay, we got it. Six nights, you know. And uh, yeah, then my mom would be whipping up like French toast in the morning, and then we'd get fucking muse licks. <laughs> you know, they yeah. had this little card that they would write like pancake or French toast or egg, whatever. And uh, she's like, uh, you know, sweating, and we're in there eating, you know, pop tarts and shit. But yeah, it was a, it was a fun place to grow up, and I met a lot of interesting people. I met a lot of cool, interesting weirdos, and uh, yeah. But the the crime was so bad, and you just felt nervous all the time like you took your bike out and people were like where are you going oh my dad was such a, a nerd too one time these kids were like dancing or playing in the fire hydrant mm -hmm. you know as you've seen it in movies and he would drive up and we were on our way to school and he would go excuse me excuse me that's illegal and i'm like god, god damn it dad yeah, just yeah. keep going what are you Shut gonna change up. their mind they're six yeah. like and they're like how huh, what he's like that's illegal and i'm like get Get out of here. Uh, one time these two prostitutes were walking in front of our house. And my dad's like, could you not stay in there? And I'm like, ah! and they're like, fuck you, bitch. I'll do what I want, you know? And uh, they came up to the car and they're like tapping the glass. I was like, shut up, dad. But he was so clueless. Yeah. Brutal. Could you not stand there? And I remember thinking, like, how do you know they were prostitutes? Because back then you don't know what sexy is. And they had these short shorts on and cleavage and everything. But yeah, he knew. Also, it's weird when a a guy's renting out your room and he just pulls up and sees whores and kids like shooting with the fire extinguisher or the water hydrant. It, it's a bad look for business. Yeah. That doesn't help the business. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So got robbed a ton. Uh, one day it was like the final straw. I was 14 freshman in high school. I was at a Mardi Gras parade. You know, it was like a Tuesday night out late. And are you drinking, drinking and everything at oh, that age? Yeah, when oh, do, yeah. when, let me before you get to that story, when do you when does the drinking start? I guess it starts, you know, seventh, eighth grade, you know, thirteen, twelve, thirteen. I'm, whatever. I'm surprised not a little I just feel like New Orleans it would be a touch earlier. Because yeah. that's about when everybody started with us. Thirteen, fourteen, yeah. wine coolers and bullshit. But, but the thing about New Orleans is the drinking it's it's not we're really rebelling. You're not like we're drinking. It's so normal point. there. Sure, you know, yeah, it's it people is drinking outside. I remember getting in the cabs. The guy would have a beer between his legs. Like, where are you going? You know, <laughs> that was totally normal. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so just drink it. Was, you drink a beer with dinner. You have a glass of wine when you're young. So it wasn't even like, this is crazy. We're getting a keg. It was like, yeah, get a beer. It was so normal. And we're hammered out of the Mardi Gras party. We come home and I'm already nervous. Like, shit, I'm drunk. It's a school night, you know. Uh, and then we just like a zillion cop cars. Just lights going, everything whole backyard's full, the whole front yard's full, and I, you know, I'm like, oh, my parents are dead. That was my first thought. Like, this is it. Something happened. They're everywhere, cops. Everywhere. And, you know, they're writing shit down and all that. I'm like, where are my parents? Where are my parents? Turns out these two guys broke in and uh, had guns. You know, my dad opens the door and they just do the gun thing, and he's like, oh, shit, you know. So then they bring him, and they find my mom and my brother in a TV room, and they, you know, get down on the ground. They tie him up. Y'all got a new T. You had a new TV, by the way. I guess huh? so. Yeah. 
And, uh, they yeah, tie, tie up. them up, tie all up. three of them? Yeah. Where's the jewelry? Where's the credit card? Where's the car I mean, keys? Uh, uh, at least they must be on drugs. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Totally I mean, look at out. the house. What do you mean, where's the jewelry? I the know, bike? right? <laughs> yeah. We don't have jewelry. We don't even have this wall finished yeah. over here. <laughs> yeah, my mom handed them like two Claire's, you know, <laughs> shitty diamonds. Claire. Yeah, here's my uh, puka shell, you idiot. Somebody... <laughs> yeah, we don't have jewelry. Antique jewelry. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, uh, here's a ring pop, bitch. Oh, so, God. Uh, yeah, so they, then... They tied them. Oh, God. Yeah, so eventually, you know, they got everything. They stole all the... We had two cars. <laughs> They've got the cars, and... Uh, That's intense. My, when I walked in, I saw my dad talking to the cops and to, trying to describe everything, and I just broke down. I just lost it. I'm, I'm sure. I remember I was crying, and I had to run out on the balcony because I didn't want anyone to see me crying, and my two friends started making fun of me, and I was like, well, this is about right. You know, these fucking chooches. Oh, look at Mark's crying. I'm like, ja, fuck you. What are you going to do? And then uh, in a stupid uh, rage-filled moment, I told my friend, I was because he had a car. So I was like, let's drive around and look for him. You know, what, what, what am I going to do? These two guys have guns. I got, you know, I got like a mag light and a skateboard. <laughs> what am I going to do? And so we drove around. I don't know where, I guess we're looking for my car, my mom's car. But we drove around and my friends were, I could tell they knew it was dumb, but they just did it for me, mm-hmm. you know. Cause it was a it was a emotional moment. Yeah. What? How long did your parents say it lasted? Like, uh, probably the whole thing was you know forty five minutes. And that alarm didn't go off during that. No, because they were home. You know, so like just and they just answered the door. Answered they just the door. knocked. Yeah, yeah. God, no damn. people. My, ah, so stupid. My parents were almost too. Yeah, because they could have come in any way they wanted to. They went totally. the smart way. And yeah. Knocked. Yeah. Damn. Exactly. And so after that, it was like, all right, let's move. This is enough. Enough is enough. Yeah. So uh, I think they eventually caught the guy. They did? Yeah, I think so. You ever they, get the car back? I think we did. Yeah, I can't remember, but the, they went to an ATM, and you got the camera there and, you know, different pin and all that shit. So we, they got the guy, I think. But still, you know, as two grown parents with children... You don't want to put kids through that. No. But it also fucks I wouldn't want to go through that. Yes. Fuck my kids. I don't want to be tied up in my course. own home and have a gun held to me when I'm in the, just trying to join myself in the TV room. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, it's, as, as a kid, it's like, it's a weird way to live. Like, you kind of feel like, oh, we're not important. You know, you feel very low self-esteem. Like, if, you, if people are willing to put you through that. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. You know? So, and I so go to... You- Go ahead. The suburbs and all my friends had bikes on the lawn, front door open, mom in an apron, you know, come on in. There's a pie cooling on the windowsill and shit. And there's a big fluffy dog that blew my mind. Yeah. People act like it's some kind of cool, edgy. This guy's got street cred. Street cred sucks. Sucks. Urban sucks. It's shit. It's it fucks with your psyche. It's bad for you. Suburbs. Do it. Way to go. Gentrification. It helps. I mean, it saves lives. I know we sit around and talk all day like, oh, look at these honkies coming in here and in the culture. <laughs> and I get it. I get that. But, I haven't heard honky since like the Jeffersons. Right. <laughs> but, you know, hey, every now and then a pressed juice in a dog park ain't so bad. It's better than getting stabbed. So, look, there's pros and gays, but... Uh, Frozen gay. As a kid growing up in a, in a rough hood, the, the suburbs were a fucking treat. <clears throat> Yeah, my dad knew he got us out of the city as quick as he could, and yeah, I, yeah, I would. I'm are. sure the suburbs saved our lives. Yeah, yeah black, white, whatever. Just yeah, get out just there. Get out of the the mess. Yeah. Right. I'm staying in downtown L. A. all weekend or all week, and it's fucking yeah. Walking Dead it down is there. Walking Dead. Down Wild. There. Just I asked one guy. I went to the Seven Eleven to pick up some uh, whatever, and this guy, I, the cashier, I go, "What's the craziest thing?" Because just walking to the Seven Eleven is two blocks. You got to step over eight hobos, a guy doing heroin, a gay, or whatever it is. And the guy goes, uh, oh, "Craziest thing? Uh, see that building right there?" I go, "Yeah, yeah." He goes, "I saw a lady jump out of the 15th floor and fall on her, you know, fall on the sidewalk and die." I was like, "Ah, oh, that's Jesus pretty good." Christ. Like, Thank you. I'll take that banana now. And uh, yeah, so. Downtown LA. I'm staying in this crazy place where you have to you can't wear jeans. It's so nice. You're not allowed to wear it's like old school. It's like a men's club kind of thing. Slacks on it? Yeah, so I have to change I'm in I'm in the fucking driveway putting pants on. I'm taking my jeans off like a weirdo every night. Where the hell is that? It's called the I don't know if I should give the name away. I don't give it away. But it's like one of these old oak furniture, leather, you know, uh, 19, it's like a stonecutter club, mm-hmm. Freemason type thing, but some fan got me in. 
So it's a free place, but it's weird changing uh, changing out of jeans and into into some slacks every night just to go into the building. Yeah, and then I go right up the elevator. It takes two seconds, and I got to take my pants off. <laughs> But yeah, I just keep a bag of pants yeah, on Yeah, a bag of pants. It's so stupid. But I get it. I get it. You got to uphold the code and, you know, whites only, whatever it is. So, yeah. <laughs> it, it feels very kind of Trumpy in there. Very, like, white guy with a cigar, feet up, like, elk, you know, on the on the wall there. Big tusks. But, yeah. Um, Sorry. All right. I went off no, on tear No, please. There. Please tear. I, I, I do want to talk to you about dating, though. So... Please. All these problems going on, the bed wedding, the this, the that. What age do you start getting into girls and actually dating? And how uh, old are you when you lose your virginity? I was such a mess, like, anxiety-wise, insecurity-wise, that I couldn't pick up a lady. I had to be boozing, and she had to be boozing. I, I, was, I had no game or anything. But I eventually met a gal, and uh, we became, like, serious. And it was, like, my only girlfriend. And we dated from high school till out of college. Wow. Like a high school sweetheart. We dated for 12 years. But uh, I peed on her many a time. <laughs> Do you still, are you still talking to we're, her? She's married now, yeah. but we're cool. Yeah, I, I kind of fucked her over a few times. But, uh, yeah, we're cool. And she was great. I mean, was she. she uh, did you both take each other's virginity? No, no. Oh, you had an weird. experience, lady. We, huh? we met as virgins. And then oh. I fucked a prostitute. And she banged <laughs> some other guy, I think, out of anger. And then we got back together. You, you, so you lost your virginity to a prostitute? Sure. She didn't charge me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it worked out. I had a coupon. So I got in. I How, a, what did you, why did you decide to do it like that when you had a girlfriend? Well, it was, we were kind of on the rocks. Like okay. We were talking. Remember when people said we were, were talking? But I, I don't know. We weren't really official. And oh, you hadn't started yet. It wasn't yeah. like you had been going for a year and hadn't had sex. No, okay. no. We're, okay. we're on the phone every now and then, and we'd yeah. go to a, like a, a prom or something to sock hop together. But it, it, it wasn't too serious. And then it was Y2K was in the air. You remember that? Yeah, when the world was going to end. Yeah, yeah. It, was a, it was a buzz. And it was, two, it was 1999, and me and my friends went to the French Quarter. It was New Year's Eve, Eve. And uh, the best, the best New Year's Eve Eve is way better than New Year's. Yes, Eve. it is. There's no pressure. no pressure. No one's trying to look good. Hurry up and get somewhere. Da, 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 da. New exactly. Year's Eve Eve is the jam, the jam. And, it you is. know, we had this big party to go to on New Year's Eve. So New Year's Eve Eve, we're like, hey, let's do the quarter. That's right. We're right here. Let's do it. So uh, I, I, I'm out with friends. I see a woman on the balcony and she's just flashing at the Ramada Hotel on Bourbon. I'll never forget it. And she was an older, uh, you know, she, she'd seen some winters. Let's <laughs> you know, say that. She was a little, you know, uh, wear and tear. She, you could tell she, she looked like Jennifer Aniston after a good fist fight. <laughs> and, uh, but she had a leather jacket with no shirt. And she just kept flashing people, which is pretty commonplace in the Big uh, Easy. Uh, yeah, I was going to say that's, yeah. And it's New Year's, so there's, there's a buzz in the air. And I'm 16, and all, we were all drinking and shit, and... Uh, so we're just staring at her. This is pre brazzers So we're just like, there's tits. <laughs> pre tits. We're going to stare. Ah, bro, this, yeah. and, uh, this is pre fucking um, Girls Going Wild, too, isn't it? I, or maybe yeah, like maybe right, right there. Right in there. Mm -hmm. Right in there. So mm -hmm. tits were big. Yeah. And uh, she sees us staring and she she's like yelling at us, like, what, what's going on with you guys? You know, and we're like, hey, we'd like to come up. We're fucking around. And she's like, I I'll come down. So she comes down and. Uh, She's talking to us, and it, right then it's like, oh, this is game on. Like this woman is down for something, and but we're so nervous because you're still talking to an adult lady who's you know 78, and she's like, uh, you kids want to come up and throw some beads? And I immediately I was like, oh, she thinks we're kids. This isn't gonna work. So I just do a hail mary, and I go, hey, you wanna? I don't wanna go on a 2000 a virgin. And she goes, well, I won't let you. And that was it. How old was she? She's probably 50 something. Really? 53. And sh so then what happens? So uh, she brings me and two guys up. My other two friends went and got drinks or something. And uh, I remember she opens the door to her hotel room. The door swings open. There's an old man with a white beard and a Harley Davidson hat and a leather jacket just sitting, staring at the door. And I was like, oh, we're, we're going to die. Yeah, yeah this, this guy definitely has a gun mouth. that's yeah. loaded. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He had, I, I guarantee you he had a gun on. I'm sure. He had boots on. He had a knife he probably on had, yeah, I was going to say, he was probably packed all oh, up yeah. and down. Yeah. No doubt about it. This guy came out of like some crazy like Nashville or something. This guy was like a biker guy. So 
He goes, which one is it? And she points to me. And he goes, all right, you two, let's go have some beers on the balcony. And, you know, now we're kind of like, oh, what And your hell? buddies now got to go outside and drink with this dude? Yeah, but, you know, they're cool with it because they just want the booze. Yeah. You know, so they're like, ah, fuck it, let's see what happens. That's how it was, but we were feral. We would just did shit, whim, no, no plans. And, uh, yeah, so I've told this story many times, but she just sat on the bed. She goes, how do you want to do this? And I go, well, <laughs> trying to act cool i'm like i'll take a blowjob first and she goes i don't give blowjobs and i said you fuck kids off the street but you don't give blowjobs <laughs> i don't know what i was thinking uh and she was like what, what? i was like i'm oh, sorry 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 and she goes anything else and i go are you clean and she goes you want to do this or not and i was like all right sorry sorry <laughs> and then she just got naked that's a great no I know. that's one of the best no's i've ever yeah, heard yeah. in my big life no, big do no. you want to do this or not yeah, I was like, <laughs> I'm in. Sorry, madam. Let's do a re redo. And yes, yeah, so. underage. Yeah, sixteen. She's fifty. What? Fifty three. And so, how do you end up doing it? And what is she wearing? What is she wearing? She had jeans on, a leather at this jacket. point, just still the leather jacket, yeah, no top, nothing. And she went to the bathroom. She's like, I'm gonna get more comfortable. She came out wearing yeah. nothing but socks. I'll never forget it. And she had a, she had a great bod. And I'm just terrified. I'm I'm trembling, you know. But I'm trying to keep it together. And she was like, All right, well. I had like a sweater on, a jacket, a button down, you know, jeans, <laughs> yeah. sneakers. And she was like, get more comfortable. So I, I took off the jacket, you know, and then we're just laying there. And she's like, all right, do you have a condom? And I pulled out a, you know, condom from the Reagan era. And uh, she was like, I gotcha. And she opened a drawer and it was just condoms, lube, sex toys, French tickler, dildo, vibrator. I was like, oh shit, this lady's, you know, been around. And uh, I remember I was so nervous to get naked because, you know, I was, so young and annoying that I just pulled the dick through the boxer hole because I didn't want to show my balls, which is some kind of weird kid mentality. Like, ah, I can't show you everything. It's too... Like this chick hadn't seen her share of balls. I know, exactly, yeah. exactly. She's, she doesn't even know my name. Right. But I'm, ter I'm worried about my ball sack and how gross it is. But, uh, yeah, so I just pulled it through the boxer hole, and we banged for, like, hours. For real? Yeah. And the I first never... time you had sex, you banged for hours? Well, there's so much going on. Like, my friends are out there. I'm in a random hotel room. Uh, she could kill me. He, they could be dead. Like, I, I was just thinking, you know, where are my other friends? My mom, she's going to hate this, you know. So I, uh, I couldn't really get into it. But I think she was like, I'm banging this old dude who can barely get it up. He's gross. He's saggy. He's got white hair. And this kid's like a virile, young whippersnapper. And I think that she got off on that. So I never lost the boner. So she was just using me like a like a pummel horse. Yeah. You know, just having a great time. And uh, I yeah. mean, man, it's got to kind of be experience wise downhill from there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, completely. I mean, you went right to the fucking. All star game. Yeah. yeah. But right when I was, you know, we're buttoning up and everything and then we're sitting on the bed, I felt a wave of shame. Like, what am I doing with my life? Oh my God. I'm picturing my parents, you know, teaching me how to ride a bike and Enos and all this shit. I'm like, I got to get out of here. So I open the doors and my friends fall in. They're shit housed. They've been yeah, out there boozing. Right, hours. They're 16, you know, they're trashed. And my friend's like on the floor, like, I got sloppy. Say, ah. and I'm like, we're getting out of it. I'm pulling them by the pants, you know, like, let's get out of here. And then we we left and uh, went back to my friend's And house. she didn't charge you? No, nothing. It was a win-win. Everybody everybody left happy. Did you ever tell anybody? Oh, what are you kidding? I was the king of high school. I mean, did you ever tell your parents? No. To this day, you haven't? No. Your parents listen to I'll, this stuff you have? I'll send them a link. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, I hope they never hear this. But yeah, it was crazy. I was the king of high school. It was like American Pie shit, you know? So I was going to say, how did your girlfriend find out? Or the girl you were in that towel because everyone knew? I told her. Cause you it, did. At this point, it was it was so funny. It wasn't even like hot. It was just like, this is a crazy story. And she was like, wow, that is crazy. And then we ended up banging. So, But wait, did she banged another dude first? Yeah, she, she banged. Did. I think and she told you? Well, her reasoning was she's like, I didn't want to lose it to you because it's too, it's too heavy. I'd rather lose it on some nobody. And just get it out of the way because I don't want to bleed all over you and hymen and this and that. So I was like, all right. Uh, it was a fair trade off, I felt like. Uh, I would say so. Yeah. 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 Good egg. Good lady. And the older gal kept being like, give me your number. Let's do this again. And I, I don't want her calling. Yeah. She's out of a cell phone. So she'd have to call the house, the yeah. landline. Your mom. Yeah. She's <laughs> like, where do you live? And I was like, ah, Wait, I got to get out of here. Let me ask you this question. You're 16 when you lose your yeah. virginity to her. And she's how old? 50. Three, get roughly Something guess. like that, yeah. How old was your mom when you were 16? Ooh, that's a good question. Well, can you figure it out? 
she's she was born in 55. And what year were you 16? 2000, 2000 and 2001. So your mom's younger. Her mom's like, well, 55, 65, 75, 85, 95. She's like 45, 47. Yeah, she was older than you. You lost, you lost your virginity to a woman at the time who was older than your mom. <laughs> wow, I never put that together. <laughs> Shit. All right, we got to take a break. We'll be right back. Oh, come on. Jesus. No one has ever done that math. I've told that story 8,000 times. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get a, get a nice Uber. Let me text my mom and tell her I love her. I love you, Mom. Oh, God. Damn it. Oh, God. Yikes. Oh. Yikes. I, uh, I mean, you, you were... By the way, if you haven't heard Mark's uh, Crab Feast episode, you got it's another great episode. Yeah, um, yeah. You should behind, you should hide behind those for a little while. Yeah, I think I told the virginity on that maybe. I, I if you did, I do not okay, remember that good, shit. Good. Uh, I but I, there you. was a story you told that I want you to, if you don't mind telling it again, because there's a lot of people that that listen now that didn't listen to the Crab sure. Feast, and I know you had like a health scare with with something sexual. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I just, you know, the booze, you make bad decisions. And I, years so, so ago, you're drink. So at this point, when you start drinking, are you drinking heavy? Yes. Yeah. I had a problem. You did. Yeah. I mean, I'm hung over now. Yeah. Uh, I got mugged in New York a bunch of times just cause I was so drunk that it was like, you could just take the wallet out of my pocket. I didn't know what was going on. And I lived in Brooklyn, like way out. Uh, I got mugged a bunch, but, uh, yeah. So I, you know, I was boozing it up in Cleveland, you know, not bragging. And, <laughs> Um, I met this gal, this is years ago, years ago, and I remember thinking like, all right, I'm going to be a good guy here and try to do the right thing. We don't have a condom, so we can't bang. You know, I'm trying to be a little more responsible, and we're in my hotel room, and we're both kind of, oh, what do we do? And Cleveland, everything closes. It's all done. So I was like, I got an idea. Cause we're both wanting to do something. I go, what if I put it in the keister? We won't need a condom for that. You can't get pregnant in the ass. Not that I've heard, I, I know of. If that were the case, and gays would be having babies all day long. <laughs> but uh, so that. But was also, my... you're, you're, what you're not considering is still the STD. I know. Aspect. I didn't even think about yeah. it. I was like, what? what it was STD? just about a baby's all you're thinking about. Yeah, because yeah. what STD lives in the ass? <laughs> yeah, all, I mean, of them. <laughs> all of them. Especially AIDS, the big, the big HIV. So I didn't all think of them about live that. in the asshole. In my mind, this was the responsible <laughs> thing to do. So, uh, she was like, all right, great. So we went to town and I remember thinking like, all right, you got to pee after that's how you flush everything. Yeah, clear, I, I was really, system, yeah. really trying to be responsible and, and whatever. And, then, uh, we, I don't know if you ever had an STD. No, it, it hits you about two weeks. It's usually like 13, 14 days. That's how long it takes to really notice it. And I remember the next day I was like, God damn, what I got the next day. Yeah. I was like, so I was like this. In my head, I was like, this is a really bad one. You know, if it hit me yeah, that early, right, yeah, you know, yeah. that's what my dumb brain thought. Like, uh, this is a really serious STD. So immediately I went AIDS. You go right to the top and then you, there's a lot of gay or uh, anal AIDS, you know. But this was a one night stand, correct? Yes. Yeah. And a an anal first date. Yeah. Anal. Well, that's Cleveland. One night stand. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's a Wednesday. It's, it's yeah. the Browns. <laughs> Cleveland Browns, baby. That was the mascot. Wow. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I had to do the horrible thing we, we all hate to do. You text the girl the next day, go, hey, I hate to do this, but do you have anything I should know about? You know, and uh, she was like, oh, my God, of course not. Jeez, how could you ask? And it's just super awkward. I'm like, all right, I just feel weird and something's up. And I'm just checking. No, you know, no, no judgment. And she's like, no, no, fuck you, whatever. And I was like, all right. And then, you know, the next couple of days, it's like, God damn. I, I am fucked. I have something bad. What's I got happening? Just a, a aching, like a and you're stinging. in your dick in there in it in it. Not and are even you? A, does it burn when you not, pee? Not a burn when you pee. Which and is, are you have you ejaculated again yourself? You masturbate no, since? I, I want to know if it too, hurt when that came out. No, I was too worried about it. I didn't want to fuck with it. Yeah. So I was you know, peeing. It didn't burn. You the burn is the big tell. Yeah, that's the that's the go to. So yeah. this was a no burn and an ache and a pain and a sting. So uh, I'm like, I don't so know what just, this is. <sighs> so I thought it was some high level you but know, it's only in your dick yes it's not radiating in anywhere else no radiation and 
I, I, I'm losing it. So I go to the hospital in like the, what do you call it, the clinic, the mm-hmm. one hour clinic, and I do a whole test. They go, you're clean. And I go, well, I got something, something's up. And they're like, ah, it's probably in your head. And they're like, take some antibiotics. No, it's in my dick. Yeah, <laughs> it's in my dickhead. <laughs> so I was like, all right, so I'm taking it. And, you know, nothing's working. So I know this doctor guy, so I just called him and it just kind of like unloaded on him. And he goes, huh, I bet you got shit in your dick. <laughs> what the doctor said. That's what the doctor said. I just used the word ejaculate. Yeah. <laughs> and this guy says, you have shit in your dick. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. I don't know about that because, you know, it's a, everything looked fine. And it's, and it's a small <clears throat> hole, really, uh, in your dick. So you're like, ah, that can't be it. That can't be it. And he goes, take these pills. And these pills are designed to go into your body, into your dick, and kill the shit. Somehow they like dissolve it, but he goes, "These are strong because they have to be super strong to go into a, a I mean, body and yeah. fight poo you all know? the way up in your dick." Yeah, hole. so he's like, "Whatever you do, like you take these pills, have a free day. Don't do a show, don't drive, don't take a flight or whatever." And I was like, "Ah, be fine." So I wanted to really kill what was in me, so I just took them all. You know, you're supposed to take them like one a day for three days, kind of thing. Uh-huh. And I took all three. Jesus Christ! And he's telling you uh, one of these is gonna fuck. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I took all three, and I was like, I'm fine. Who cares? Because I and also I really wanted to kill it. Mm-hmm. I really wanted it to to work. Like what on a scale of one to ten, what pain level are you at on a daily basis? Would you legit say it was pretty bad? I mean, it was it was a five, but it's still but it's in your in dick. Your dick. Yeah, you so don't that's know a what ten. It is. That's so your, a ten. Your brain is going crazy. Yeah. Could it be this? Could it be that? <laughs> So it's a mental 10, but yes. a, probably a pain Fair 5. Fair enough. All right, so I take the pills, and he goes, make sure you eat. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. I hadn't eaten. It was like noon. I hadn't eaten that day, and I just popped. And they were big. They were like big horse pills. And I gulped them down, and, uh, you know, 10 minutes walked by or went by, and I just felt like, whoa, whoa. And I started feeling weak. Like I could barely get off the couch, and I said, I better go eat. So I remember I was in New York walking down 6th Avenue trying to get to a pizza place. And I went to the pizza, and I'm just like, uh, uh, and I had to sit down. And I had to sit down and order from the chair and be like, can I get two slices? And I fell asleep in the chair. No. Like, they knocked me out. So the guy, like the little uh, Italian guy, is like, hey, what the fuck are you doing, you junkie, you piece of shit? Get out of here. Ah, yeah, and I was you're like, the junkie no, now. I'm not a junkie. I got shit in my dick. I got shit in my dick. dick. The whole thing. I just have shit in my dick. Yeah. <laughs> and he's if like, I could just get a slice of pepperoni, I right. have shit in my dick. <laughs> he's like, oh, the city's going down the toilet. I'm like, I got a toilet in my dick. I'm, I'm covered in shit here. And uh, so uh, I got, I, I scarfed down the slices and I felt better. But it, like the whole day, I was like, whoa, it was all wonky. I had to do shows and everything. And it was bad, but it worked. It did. It killed it. How fast? Just a couple days? A couple days. Next day, huh. even, I think I felt better. Then two days later, I felt 100% fine. See, I mean, ass fucking goes back. So if there's a pill to yeah. clean shit out of your dick, yeah. ass fucking goes back for centuries. That's a good... The Romans. Yeah, way back. The Greeks. The Greeks. The Greeks. That's I'm what a, I meant. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure the Romans ass fucked a lot, too. But. Oh, yeah. They invented um, it. God. Yeah, that's fucking scary. Have you had anal sex, unprotected anal sex since? No. All right. I had before that, but yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Never never unprotect. Yeah. Was Kobe Kobe did the anal. Was that what got him in trouble? I'm not sure. I think he went for the back door. I'm not he sure. He went for the for the three. Um, um <laughs> sorry. Uh R. I. P. Kobe. Um I wanna talk so I'm I'm a huge fan of yours. I watch, I follow you. I watch everything going on. I love that Seinfeld loves you. Oh, that's a great, I mean, come on. Can you believe it? That after the shit story, I, I mean, isn't that wild? Yeah, I love it. I love that he loves you. I hope he never um, hears that. I watch all the comedians in cars. I love his Eddie. I, as soon as the Eddie Murphy one was done, I put it right back on. Um, I, and you know, everything I've seen you do with him is great, but I didn't know you had, You'd open for him. Yeah, yeah. So how many times? Uh, four shows, two nights, two shows a night. And some, some you had something happen. It was a bit of a snafu. <laughs> well, he's a particular Jew, you know. He likes it his certain way, and uh, he was like, "Okay, you do fifteen minutes, no light, no clock, whatever it is." And you go, "Yeah, sure, I can handle that." So I'm in my apartment, like saying it and timing myself because you don't want to. I don't want to fuck this up. And then it's hard because you so got you got to nail that fifteen. You got to nail it. You don't want to go too you. long. Good you don't want to go too short. Yeah. And also in your apartment, you're not getting any laughs, obviously. 
And so you can't, it's hard to gauge. So you have to like do the joke in your apartment, pause, mm-hmm. maybe they're laughing there. Or then you, It's really tough. And you know, you're just swimming in your head because he has all these instructions. So you got to like remember the instructions. You got to remember not to go too long. You got to not forget a bit. You can't, you can't go out there with notes or anything. And so uh, first show goes great. Second show comes around. I'm hanging out with Jerry. I've reached the mountaintop. This is, this my, is also the first night you're ever working with him. First night ever. I've met him once before, but we're really hanging. We're in the green room. We're laughing. He likes one green room, which is cool because he wants to hang with the comic. He's a real pure comic. Yes. And we're chatting it up and having a great time. Second show, the, the guy comes in with the headset. All right, you're up, Mark. And I'm like, hey, all right, Jer, I'll see you down there. He goes, all right, baby. He puts his blazer on. It's great. And it's real showbiz, sold yeah. out, Beacon Theater. I mean, yeah. the sign, man, Jer. So uh, I go on, having a hot set. And I kind of like, where am How I? How much at? time are you doing? 15. Okay. That's it. Easy peasy. Squeaky Fif- clean. Of course. 15, you got to nail it, though. But, but I mean, your first, I'm sorry. What I mean to say is the first show. Yeah. Did you, are you nailing it? Nailed are you at it. 13? Or you, you nailed it. I don't know did what you have I a did. timer somewhere? But, oh, I would love to know. I know. I'm such an idiot because yeah. everybody's tweeting at me like, put a fucking thing in your pocket that vibrates. Yeah. And all this yeah. Shit. Anything. Because I had a friend who looked at his watch and he didn't like that. Jerry didn't like the watch look. Oh, really? Yeah. Because it just looked. Uh, it looks like you're bored, you know? Yeah. So I didn't want to do the watch, but I was like, I can do this. That's so interesting. Yeah. yeah. He's a fickle, fickle heap. So <laughs> um, I go out there. I'm having a good set. Beacon sold out comedy audience there to see comedy. And I do the set and I go, thank you. And I run off stage, assuming I'm going to high five him. Yeah. He's not there. Well, why you assume? Is that where he was on that's, the first show? He, yeah, you come off, he goes on. Right on. And it's seamless. He's in boom, the wings. Yeah, yeah, waiting in the wings, looking sharp, ready to go, comedy legend. I go back. I'm in the dark wings of the, the theater. He's not there. And I go, oh, I'm, I, did I do two minutes? Did I do 15? Yeah, now what you're happened? second guessing everything. So there's some grip guy sitting on a stack of ropes, you know, playing like a fucking <laughs> yeah, yeah. casino game yeah, on his phone. Right. Like, bing, yeah. bing, 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 bing. And I go, what do you think I should do? He's the only guy I got. He's it's, it's, it's it. And he goes, eh, you better go back out there. And I go, all right. And I run back out and I do like a couple more bits. And here's how, the, hold on. How much more time do you do? I probably did two minutes, and two you, and a half. <sighs> God, I, I would ne- I would just be like, somebody better find I would never. You wouldn't have gone out? You, fuck no. Come on. I'd have been petrified to go out. I'd have been I, terrified. But, I would have I rather. I, yeah, I hear you. I yeah. know that's a tough call. I, I don't know like I if I would do it. Going down with the ship at least. Yeah, like, I'll right. do the noble thing yeah, right. and take it on the chin. It's Because this weird. guy wants two more minutes of his blackjack game on yeah, his phone. Yeah, yeah. I should have never listened to that fucking idiot. So you you went back out. I went back out. And, and I, but how, what do you say when you walk out? Like, what is there? Because they're waiting to see something. Of course. <laughs> And they already had to put yeah. sit through my bullshit yeah. for 15 minutes. They're like, who's this guy? You know, but He's they were back. Nice. He's back. So I come back and I go, <laughs> and it's completely obvious. Like something's amiss. Something's off. And I go, well, I'll probably be fired after this. And that gets a big laugh because it cut the tension. Everybody knew that mm-hmm. I fucked up. And uh, so I go into material. And the material is working. But then this fucking Long Island cum guzzling Nazi in the back goes, Jerry, we want Jerry. And you're already fucking yeah, flipping out and now yeah. i got this douche yelling at me at the beacon at the fucking beacon like <laughs> yeah. how big do you have to get before get we don't get these the cocksuckers <laughs> coming out <laughs> you'd think we'd get the white trash filtered <laughs> out with the 75 dollar tickets yeah. but no this guy comes in <laughs> on the LRR, in. <laughs> yeah and blows everything ah some giants fan <laughs> sucked my ass so uh, I, I don't mention it because I don't want to get into a thing. No. You, before you know it, you're going, fuck you, you piece of shit, you know, and then you ruin the whole clean show. So I just I just block it out and I just keep going and I end, I had a good laugh at the end. But how do you know when to end? What makes you think I better get the fuck off? Well, I feel like I did, I felt like I at least did 13 the mm-hmm. first time. So in my mind, I'm matching I to see. fill the difference. Yes, got it. Again, it's all hearsay. I'm, I'm, so the whole thing is you think he's not in the wings because you didn't hit 15. Yes. And I'm going to go out and do two more minutes and we'll be good. Exactly. Okay. And it's awkward and it's a hiccup, <laughs> but it's not the end of the world, whatever. Sure. But I'm still freaking out. And then I go, thank you, whatever. I run off. He's standing there. And he is uh, he's none too pleased. <laughs> you know? 
which is such a weird moment. Because I'll bet. I'm on the mountaintop. Hanging yeah. out with you. I got him in a headlock, giving him a <laughs> noogie. Ah, you piece of shit. I'm giving him a nut flick and a credit card swipe, and we're yucking it up. And then I, I've made it, baby. I'm in New York City with Jerry. And then I went right down to the fucking Did he say trot. anything when you walked in there? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing, which just, is even worse. Yeah, it is. Cause it, it, silence. I hate silence. Hate I'd rather silence. you fucking call, scream in yes, my face. Yes, yes. It felt like when your dad wasn't yeah. yelling, he's like, I'm disappointed. You know, which hurt way more. Yeah. And uh, so I come up, and there was a, he's got like a right-hand man guy who does all, all the shit. He has a headset on. He's got like a piano. What do you call the The music stand with mm-hmm. the notes on it and everything. And I go, and Jerry goes out. And I now that Jerry's gone, I feel like I can ask some questions. What the fuck? And he goes, that was bad. <laughs> that was bad. I was like, ah. Oh! Oh, no, uh, I was hoping to go, ah, what are you going to do? Yeah. We'll get it next time. But he was we'll like, get yeah, it that was bad. I was bad. He's like, you fucked up. Uh, uh, and I'm like, what should I have done? He goes, he I can't. He said those words, yeah. you fucked up. Oh, yeah. God damn. And I kept trying, what, what, what did I do wrong? Yeah. He's like, I can't, right? I'm, I'm working. You know, like he was doing shit. He's got lights going and stuff. He's adjusting the mic. So he couldn't talk. So all you want to do is Yeah, back, right. And ask him. Yeah. <laughs> And now you've got the plug pulled there, too. So there's an elevator that goes up to the green room. It's an old building, you know, the one of those cling cling where you, you close the gate elevators and then the doors close. And I'm in there with this little Hispanic guy who's probably been at the Beacon since, you know, the fucking Sinatra years. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I go, uh, he could barely speak English. And I go, uh, hey, man, was, uh, did Jerry Seinfeld seem mad? He goes, yes, yes, mad. <laughs> mad. Like, oh, fuck me. <laughs> Damn it! So I go up and I'm just pacing in the green room, covered in sweat. Oh, I hate but, oh you gotta wait what a, a good hour. A good hour. Yeah, the hour. I oh. if I I swear to God, if I could have given my left hand, if somebody <laughs> said, "I'll give you your left hand to re- go back thirty minutes in time," I would have done it in a second, second, because that's how flipped out I was. I was freaking it, man. I'm putting water on my face. I'm pacing. <laughs> I, I didn't know what to do. You know when you're on mushrooms and you look at your phone, it looks all weird? Yeah. That's how it looked because I was so wonky. Yeah. I, my emotions were riding oh, high. Oh, God. So, yeah, he came off, and he was like, don't ever go back out, back out there. Kind of is that the So what's the first thing he said when he walks in the green room? Is that where you see him, the green room? He didn't go in the green room. I went back oh, down. You went back down. And I just okay. sat there like, okay. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. The principal's going to yell at me, yeah. and it's going to suck, but I'm going to take it. And he goes, you, never, you don't ever go. Yeah, he's pissed. And, uh, yeah, he... He got in his car and left. So now it's even That's worse. That's all he said. That's was... it. Don't ever go back out there. And I go, ah. And he goes, ah. Don't ever go back. And I go, okay. He, he was completely right. And, uh, but that's all he said. That's all he said. He so cut you, gotta, you off and repeated it. You got to live with that. Oh, and now, yeah. I, now I don't know if I'm coming back tomorrow. Now he's going home with his Porsche. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'm just laying in bed. I, I had my suit on in bed because I couldn't even. I'm just laying in my apartment like staring at the ceiling fan like Apocalypse Now, you know. And I'm like, all right. Well, I blew it. I don't, I'm not going to go back tomorrow. And he sent me a nice text in the morning, and that was it. What did he say? He just said, hey, like, looking forward to seeing you tonight. Check that's, this video out, whatever, whatever. And I was that's like, cool. oh, oh thank I God. I was texting with this right-hand man all night, like, what mm-hmm. do I do? He's like, just don't bring it up. You fucked up. That's what I was going to ask. Don't so bring it up. the next night, you don't bring it up? No. And he doesn't? No. And are you, but are you terrified that Ter- you better hit this 15 motherfucking minutes? It's funny because on the way the first night to the beacon, I was like, this is crazy. You're nervous for a different sure, reason. Sure. Now I'm nervous <laughs> about it. I'm in yeah, trouble. Yeah, Before right. I was nervous about fucking up and having a good show and meeting him. And, you know, and now I'm nervous about. Well, him where being the fuck was he when you walked off? You never found out no, why he no, wasn't no, there? No, no oh, idea. Oh, man. No idea. Oh, but God. But I assume he didn't I just, fuck up. Inside, I feel that. Ah, oh, oh, I just man. talking about it. I'm getting all. Jewy. I um I want I don't want to say who it is, but um Uh-oh. I was at the comedy store one time and I truly don't remember the comedian who asked this other comedian and I won't say his name, I'll tell you off the air, but he's a you know, huge podcaster. Sure. And the guy was like, Hey, can I do your podcast? And I'm watching this moment and the comedian oh. just, just looked at the guy and said nothing and walked away. Oh. And and yeah, and I saw that and I was like <laughs> like the feeling I had of just watching it, I yeah. was like, I can't imagine what that is, and I never, oh. I never want to fucking feel that. I can, I already know just by the. I never want to feel the that. Conversation, yes. I can tell who's oh. who said no, God. and that's horrific. Yeah, horrific. I, but I get it. I, I but a, but but again, not a go fuck yourself or whatever. Just a just a no answer. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Ooh, no that's harsh. Yeah, no that's answer. That's like asking out a girl, and she's like, I don't even have 
the respect for you to <laughs> tell open you no, my I'm mouth to walk away. To communicate. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's crushing. Um, I heard Bill Burr tell a story once about how he saw this guy when he was like new. He saw a guy keep bugging a, a bigger comic, mm-hmm. and the bigger comic goes, "Stop! You've never talked to me without asking me for something." Stop asking me for things and walked away. And Bill Burr was like, I'll never ask for anybody, anything. Yep. It's, it's, it's true. These guys, the, the younger guys do that a lot. I mean, we all did it. We all thought about it. Like, here's uh, whoever, big comic. Let me see what I can get. You know, we're all struggling and scrambling to get work. So that, I, I remember hearing that and just being like, you can't ask. Because people are so dumb. They go, hey, you're opening for Jerry. Why don't you ask him to do this? And ask him. <laughs> right, I'm like, yeah, yeah. that's why I'm opening for him. Because I'm not asking <laughs> I'm him, you not fucking asking idiot. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to say, uh, never mind. All right, sorry. Um, you mentioned too. We were talking about embarrassing shows. It was a corporate gig. Oh, this was bad. This was. This How long was, ago was this? This is uh, December. So <laughs> like about a month ago. I just important because I love that. You know, you 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 work so hard to get to where you are, and then these little things like this oh, could yeah. super derail anything. Brutal, man. I two one hundred and twenty fucking seconds. Yeah, could derail your whole, whole entire life. existence with Seinfeld. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Christmas rolls around, and you know, as a comic, you get all these corporate gigs, like <coughs> you know, these companies need a comic to do their party or whatever. And now that I've got the Seinfeld cachet, people are like this guy opens, for, he can do clean. We'll hire this guy. I got a ton of corporate gigs. I probably got seven. I bombed every one of them. Really? Every single one. They're so dumb. They, there's a, a lady goes, Bee, you know, hey, hey everybody, uh, we're going to bring up a comedian. Mark Norman is here. He's been on this, this, and they're like, they got a tr- little plate of food and a, and a yep. kebab, and they go, huh? And I'm just in like a hotel ballroom, yep. and they're like, what is this? And you, you're you doing your act, and they're not Ready. listening, and they're, they want to talk, and, you know, it's brutal. I've done so many. I've done my share of those. Yeah, yes. they're and, you're like oh, and you just the pay well, so you just that's count it. You the know, minutes. you're like this thirty minutes. Yeah. is gonna fucking suck. Yeah, I'm gonna power through it for that paycheck. So I got the mother of all corporates, which was a pharmaceutical award show. They give out awards for pharma pharmaceutical drugs. I, it's all very stupid, but I had to buy a tux. They paid for the tux. They got me a limo from my apartment to. This beautiful five-star hotel in Philadelphia. So this is big. Yeah. Weeks before the show, you they live get, in New York, right? Yeah. They limo you down yeah, from New York. That's wow. A two-hour limo. Yeah, yeah. And this was a limo, and uh, they gave me a, like a stack of cards to study because I had to get the names right. You know these pharmacy sure. names. Uh, try so mechalakabuka da. You know I had to yeah, say right. all that shit right and all that. And it was an award show, so I'm not just doing my act. I'm presenting next up we have a war it's i'm ricky gervais best dick pill 2019 yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah so this is big i show up there uh it's like there's a big sound booth there's the waiters are having like a meeting getting spoken to like we gotta we can't fuck this it's well, lobster there's money and, and money and medication and big money yeah. big pharma so i meet this lady she's she's like this is how it's gonna go down you're gonna do this and we have to do a dry run we do two dry runs it takes forever and this is big so finally the seats start filling and I'm supposed to do 15 How minutes. many people would you say are in I'd this ballroom? I'd say 400 people. Oh, that's big. And it's chandelier. The waiters are wearing a white coat and everything. It's big. So I'm, I'm supposed to do 15 minutes of stand-up to warm it up and then do the award show. And the whole thing is going to be about three hours. Damn. Yeah. But it's paying. It's paying. So I got all my stack. You know, I'm, I'm pronouncing the words right. I'm, I'm nervous. But I'm like, the comedy I got, the, the nervous part is the award show. And there's a stack of these beautiful uh, glass pointy awards all on a table that I hand to, you know, this dumb fat there's lady. There's no one helping you at all. It's no, just it's all you me. doing the whole all thing. All me. <laughs> People assume because you tell jokes that you can do other things Everything, on right? Yeah, yeah. Everything. Yeah. I, I talk That's about my all. dick for an hour and you're like, oh, he can host a, a, a drug show. So strange. <laughs> it is. That's why I wanted to ask. Yeah. <laughs> just making you do everything up there. Yeah crazy so i do i go up to do my time and i'm like hey everybody here we are and i'm you know you're trying to be as much you as you can but still be funny and and and, and corporate uh, and appropriate corporately exactly. appropriate you know, there's mm-hmm. hr right up your yeah, ass right there's there old yeah. ladies there there's rich i met the guy who does uh root routers routers what's that news affiliate out, out of britain routers? routers i don't know it's a big one this guy's a billionaire literally so it's very strange. I bombed the set. The set goes so bad. The 15? 15. 
I mean, I got like two chuckles because one guy got up and left, and I commented, and that got a laugh. And then eventually, so I'm like, all right, I'm 10 minutes in. I haven't gotten one good laugh. I'm going to go a little dirtier. And I checked in before. I said, if I go a little dirty, I only do stuff I've done on Conan and, you know, still TV sure, clean. TV clean. But it might have a sexual innuendo or it might, you know, talk about naked or something. So I do a joke about a vibrator. And uh, immediately this table of ladies all together in like a huff get up and walk out. Really? I was like, really? You walked people at a corporate event? Walked them at a corporate a whole event. table? Yeah, and they're eating too. So they had to leave their food and leave their table. And I was like, well, that's weird. That joke is so innocuous and ridiculous. And it's making fun of me. I'm talking about how to vibrate is better than me in bed. And, you know, my girlfriend got one, so I can't compete. And she got up and walked out. And I was like, well, fuck her. That joke, it, it was in my head. I was like, she's crazy. Fuck her. What are you going to do? So I do the whole set, I bomb, whatever, and I come off stage, and I'm now it's go time. Right like, now we're starting. Now the we're ceremony. starting. Yeah, big. The ba -da -ba -da -ba -da, <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I, I I come off, and the the British lady was or the the lady putting it together, she was like, that was that was pretty rough. That was bad. I was like, yeah, yeah, sorry. I don't. I did my act. She's like, yeah, it's not your fault, but damn, I was hoping that would go better. I was like, yeah, what are you gonna do? And and then some guy goes. <laughs> And waves are over, and so she leaves, and I have to go back up. So I'm like, all right, folks, here we are at the 2019 Pharmaceutical Awards in Philadelphia, all this shit. And they already hate me because I'm the guy who bombed. Now right. I'm back on there, and I got two hours and 58 minutes to go. Oh, you know? God. Brutal. But you're just like, money, money, think about it. It's a, it'll be a story. And uh, I'm bombing, I'm bombing. Now I come off stage because some guy gives a speech about his, his dick pill, yeah. and I come off. And the lady's crying, the the producer lady who booked me, yeah. and she's like, "You offended the CEO's wife. She yelled at him. He yelled at me. They want you out of the building. They're so pissed off. She's gonna. She's threatening to, to sue or whatever the hell. I don't know. Like after I'm the like, first award. Like, Wait, what? What, what, are you, what are you talking? We got a whole night ahead of us here. Like they they got their appetizers. This is crazy." And she's like, I know it's crazy, but I, I, have I no got control. this Pfizer joke that's going to kill here in 20 <laughs> minutes. Yeah. And I'm like, wait, what is going on? I couldn't even wrap my head around it. I was so flabbergasted. And she's like, I know, I'm sorry. We're going to let this guy do it. Some fucking dweeb in glasses is just like, uh, I guess I'll handle it. He's got the stack of cards and he just goes up there and start hosting. And they're like, you got to go. Like, you, not only do they not want you to host, you gotta, they want you to leave. And I was like, what? Are you kidding? I came in a limo. I got a tux on. Are you fucking nuts? We got a whole night ahead of us. She's like, yeah, you got to go. And she's weeping. So I was like, all right. And I just. You have the check already? No. Oh, fuck. So I had to go. I took my tux off. I, I walked out through the party with jeans on like, fuck this. You know, I look so different. You know, I'm wearing a T-shirt. And uh, I, I get in a, a car and they, I drive home. Did and that they was pay it. you? It was a fight, but we got it. You did? Yeah. All of it. My manager, Fuck yeah. bless his fucking Jew heart, he goes, <laughs> we had a conference call the day before, and he goes, just to make sure everything you've approved of, he could say, and it's fine. She goes, totally fine. So we had that convo on record, and that's the only reason we got paid. All right, good. Yeah, but... good. I mean, what a long, weird ride back. Fuck like, yeah. What happened? What the fuck? And I got... But here's the cool part. I got a million messages, like DMs, going... Dude, I thought you were funny. I couldn't laugh next to my boss. You're talking oh, that's about, nice. Yeah, you talk about your gay roommate. I don't want to laugh. I got the <laughs> HR here. And he's like, but I'm coming. I see you're coming to Philadelphia I'm Helium. Coming to I'm see. coming. There you go. So I made some <laughs> there fans, you go. I guess. But they're like, <laughs> what are these people doing booking comedy? Nobody wants comedy. Everybody's scared to laugh. We're all PC, and it's HR, and it's a corporation. I look, we'll take the money, but it's not going to be what you think. They think I'm going to be Don Rickles in there going, hey, look at yeah, the Mexican right. guy in the kitchen. Wow. Yeah. And the crowd sucks. I'm sorry. I don't know what you want me to do. I, I've done these jokes on the Tonight and also, Show. Also, you're on a state. You're so far. It's not. It's not good for comedy. You're no. so far away from these people. They're eating. Yes. They don't know who the fuck you are. They're not there to see you. Right. They're there for this event. Yes. You're, you're a part of their night. Yes. Not there. You're. You know. I'm they're not the a way. part. Yes. You I'm are the in the way. Yes. Yeah. And they outside. They hate me. So yeah, I just rode back, and I, it was pretty disheartening just like damn because sure it's a corporate but you still want to do well and nobody yeah. wants to bomb no. and this poor lady's crying i don't want her to crying. lose her job yeah so yeah that that cunt wife of the ceo <laughs> is the problem that coos needs to <laughs> get fucked coos. by like a big dong or something because she needs a, a, a 
a break, a Kit Kat bar. She's all repressed. Well, th- we have to get you out of here. You got to get ah, your train. Sorry. Uh, but thank you. I appreciate you coming on. Oh, this hey. has been so much fucking Thanks, fun. Thanks, man. Sorry uh, if I, I rambled I, there. You're, please. You're fantastic, dude. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, I want to ask this of everybody now. Mm. So you can give advice to your 16-year-old self. Oh, boy. And you don't have to be 16. It could be anything that you would tell you. You can be, you know, hey, yeah. when you're 35... Put that condom on and, yeah. you know, get that shit out. Oh, I'm sorry, you know, whatever age you were when you got shit in your dick. Yeah. That's uh, what 24. would you tell your 16-year-old self? Uh, one, cool it with the booze, man. Like, it's all right to drink, but I'm blacking out. You know, there's so many times I woke up driving, you know, like riding a, like a, like a sidewalk and shit. Really? Yeah. Like, I, I, I'm lucky to be alive. <sighs> Everybody else is, too. Yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> People a good point. On the I could have run over an Asian Anybody. kid or something. Yeah. So uh, just cool it with the booze and, and enjoy. I don't remember any of my teens, really. I, I was just so drunk the whole time. And like my early 20s, I barely remember it. Who knows what I did, you know? So cool it with the, the alcohol. Get some weed in you. You know, take a zanny or something. Because I was so insecure and annoying. So just cool it with the booze. Start comedy earlier. Because I think most young boys need a thing. You need a goal. That's why we play sports and get into shit, you know? Because you need a a purpose. Yeah. I was so rudderless that I was just was trying to fill the hole with, with alcohol. Uh, so get comedy going early. Uh, believe in yourself just a little. I don't, I didn't believe myself at all. I was just like, I'll probably die in a That's car crash. I tell my daughter all the time. Just believe in yourself. Yes. That's it. Yes. Don't listen to anybody else. Right. Right. And maybe they'll you know, get some therapy. And I oh, kind of yeah. wish as a kid, I would have maybe tried to connect with the folks more. Yeah. There was a big disconnect. And now, you know, my dad's kind of, older and not doing great so i mean i guess i could do it now but i wish i had done it then just to have the whole life with them so wow this is getting a little little sappy and cheesy but yeah just cool it with the booze maybe get some therapy start comedy and find that thing you love folks if there's a 14 year old listening right now find the thing you love and yes. just go towards it yeah even if it's having a kid and starting a house or building a wife yep. or starting a business Build. or an app yeah something you know, get it, get going on, on what it is because that time, it flies. I'm 36. I was 22 10, ten seconds, seconds ago. ago. Jinx. Boom. Buy me a Coke. So, yeah, just remember your – I know it's hard because you're young, but the time is incredibly precious. And think about it. Even if you had started, like, a savings account and put a buck in a, a week, <laughs> yeah. and you have, you'd have, like, thousands and thousands yes. of dollars now over interest and years, yes. and that's just free money. That's just time pass. You get the money. So – I know nobody's going to do it, and I know some 20-year-old out there is going to go, it's going to go one in the air and out the asshole, but just get, <laughs> get going on something. Time is going to click by, and you're going to be 38, and That's you're going to be bald truth. and fat and ugly and worthless, and you're going to do Oxycontin, and you're going to get hooked on methadone, and then you're going to die in your grandma's basement, you fucking loser. <laughs> so get out there. <laughs> Count the minutes. We're all going to die. If you, if you make it to 50, you're already lucky. You're living in America. Well, maybe. You're, you're living in America. You're an able-bodied person. You got no excuse. I don't care what color you are, what gender you are, whatever it is. Get out there. You know, you see these fucking wheelchair kooks. They're all playing basketball and shit and doing marathons and stuff. Some guy's got no legs or rollerball or whatever the hell. That guy can get up and get out, and you can't get an, an Uber membership? Come on. <laughs> an Uber membership. I got friends like, oh, Venmo you. What's Venmo? Oh, it's, ah, I'm not doing that. Oh, kill yourself. You can't even keep up with the Venmo? Blow me. So, yeah, just get on it and get out there and make something happen. That's all great advice. Thank um, you, sir. One more time. Promote whatever you'd like, please. Hey, MarkNormanComedy.com. All my dates. I got merch on there. I got my podcast on there. Tuesdays with Stories with Joe List. And uh, Twitter, Mark Norm. Instagram, Mark Norman. And yeah, be nice to everybody and uh, hug your kids and get a hobby and stop getting mad. So everybody's so angry now. That's the, the truth. Politics and the news and get get outside, get some sunshine, build a table, fuck your dad, do something. You know, <laughs> just do something. There's so many people wasting lives out there. I, I see it every day. Uh, but yeah, live it up and god damn, make something. Even if you, everybody's so scared of failing, you know. But just go fail. That's the advice. Go fail. I, I you like should that. be failing. Yeah, you should be failing. People think failing That's is wrong. That's how you learn. That's how you learn. That's it. And, you know, what would Edison say? He's like, I didn't fuck up a thousand times. I learned how it didn't work a thousand times. Right. You know? So, yeah, try something. Try comedy. Try Go gay. Do something. Mix it up. 
uh, buy a hot rod, build it, something, <laughs> something. You know, help a kid who's, uh, you know, hurting or whatever. That's good. Rescue a kid. Yeah, rescue a kid. And praise Allah, God damn it. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Uh, as always, I am Ryan Sickler on all social media, ryansickler.com. Talk to you all next week. Thank you.